they sought God, sold out to God in front of that church building in 1859 all of a sudden it sounded like wild beasts and animals were in the street demons fleeing and coming out 4,000 men and women in front of that building couldn't get in the building got set free delivered and set free and the revival of 1859 started it stopped all the factories in Ireland for two weeks people couldn't walk they were too drunk in the spirit and I'm telling you this it took 25 people seeking the same God we're seeking and God is desirous to move upon this nation no short no different than then God is on the move, but we got to believe it and we got to pay the price to get there. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, we are not here by happenstance. Our steps are order to the Lord. Remember it, you've got to follow the order. Our days of complacency is over as men and women of God. We are going to take the very spiritual horns of, by, the, by the horn, the spiritual life, the things that needs to be released in the earth, and we will not be denied to see the move of God upon flesh, to change the flesh, to get it turned around, get them encouraged, get them to a new level and a new understanding. Even people... Let me tell you something. Oh. <laughs> I want to read you something. Don't be deceived. I can remember walking the beaches of Florida, remote beaches, five, six, seven hours a day, seeking God when the move of God began to happen. And what happens, we get too caught up in daily life thinking uh, uh, that everything else is important. Let me tell you something. There's one thing important. That is you spending time with God, expecting the Holy Spirit to speak and move you to new levels so you will understand your call and then empowering you to fulfill the call. When you do, men and women's lives will be changed, families will be saved, and great things will happen, and God will receive the glory. It said here a minute, I want to read this again. It's been all over me. Acts uh, 10 and 38, it said that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. And he went about healing all the sick. He, he said, wait and hear what God's saying tonight. Listen here. And Isaiah says, wait and listen. we got to be willing to wait and listen for the Holy Spirit's fire and the wind of God to blow upon the church again. And I'm telling you this, it's blowing. It's coming. And I, that's why God spoke through a lot of the prophets this last year. In 2010, there would be new alignments take place. Nobody wants new alignments. Nobody wants to get out of their comfort zone. Nobody wants to have to get up and shift in their side. The main alignment that has to take place is in our heart. We've got to be willing not to be embarrassed to let a God that created us show up and change men and women's lives like never before and give him the praise and the glory and the credit. Amen. It says, wait and listen, everyone who is thirsty. Is there a thirsty soul in here tonight? Well, there's three or four of you thirsty. I, <laughs> is there anybody? I, I, I think everybody. You know what I even think if there's any atheist in here? Really, they'd like to hear the voice of an awesome God. <laughs> I think they would. I guarantee you. They just don't know. They would really like to hear God. But let me tell you something. This Bible says, if you will wait and listen, if you are thirsty, you'll get a drink. So are you thirsty? Are you thirsty enough? Are you, or can you still walk in the desert just a little bit further before you pass out? How thirsty are you? Are you thirsty? I'm asking a question. As the pastor of this church, are you thirsty enough to wait on the Lord? Are you? 
Are you thirsty enough that to take what it... Let me read it again. I'm going to prophesy to you right from the book. If you will, wait and listen. If you are thirsty, if you'll come to the water, if you have no money tonight, makes no difference. If you want to eat of the Spirit of the living God, the Word of God, receive of the fire of God, then it's going to be yours and not cost you nothing but a desire. It'll cost you a passion. It'll cost you a want to. It'll cost you a, a hunger. And he will feed the hunger with the fire and presence of the Holy Spirit. He said, wait and listen. Everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come and buy and eat. Yes, come buy priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price. But... Simply for the self-surrender. Mm, I'm meddling in your business now, man. Whenever uh, I, I've thought the whole issue has been the self getting in the way. The self. I mean, this is ignorant, isn't it? I mean, it's ignorant for a man or woman to hold on to self when he said, surrender it, and then you're going to get ever spiritual blessing. <laughs> it says without price all you got to do is simply for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing of God oh. <laughs> I mean I mean the only thing that's keeping a man or woman of God from receiving a word from God, revelation from God, the provision of God is self. God's saying this, but if you're willing to surrender self, you're going to be blessed beyond what you can even think or dream according to Ephesians 3, 19 and 20. He's going to pour out a blessing, but you've got to be willing to surrender that selfish attitude. Get out of that zone and come into the presence of the living God. There's always conditions to walk in the high places with God. One of them is to wait and listen, not jump and run. Say, I'm going to wait and listen. I'm not going to jump and run. I'm in the presence of God. I expect to hear His voice. I lay down self tonight and I receive God's blessing on my life my family's life the church's life my nation's life anyone I touch shall be blessed because of the blessing of God on my life okay I'm just kind of leading in here to I'm giving the Holy Spirit time to function pretty good filler though isn't it <laughs> I mean you know <laughs> we're in a new season we're in a new place don't get discouraged when you see that guy sitting next to you and think my God God's in trouble Don't be like Saul when he saw David, said he still had peach fuzz on his face. And he said, son, do you think you know what you're doing? <laughs> well, God said it. He put the blind in my hand. I killed him by the throat. He put the bear in my hand. I destroyed him. He ain't nobody coming on our property. There ain't nobody coming on this patch. That devil's entered your pea patches last time. You're going to rise up in the power and presence of God.